Good boy day. <laughs> um, it is Thursday and you're like, what? Chelsea, aren't you supposed to be working? Yes, I was supposed to work. I did get up, got my shower, and then I checked my phone. Mom had called me and texted me and said, go, go just go back to bed because I am not feeling well. She is sick, so I'm not sure what she has. I don't know if it's really bad allergies or she's got the flu. That stuff is going around as well. I don't think it's the other thing. Um, but I think it's just one or the other and she's not, she hasn't been feeling well the past couple days. It's funny because we had four houses to do today. Don't know how we're going to reschedule those or just skip them and not worry about it until the next time. Or, and then we had to reschedule a house that was supposed to be done yesterday didn't get that done so we're supposed to do it tomorrow I don't know if that's even happened I don't even know if the weekend's supposed to happen because tomorrow we were supposed to see supposed to go out to eat with my grandparents Ricky's parents um, because their anniversary celebrate their anniversary because they had a thing shing ding going on on Saturday but then we also were going to Mom, Zach, and I were going to go see my great aunt and uncle for Thanksgiving, and then that might even be um, canceled as well. So I don't know. It depends on how mom's feeling. I don't know if it's going to happen. And then I don't know how long mom's going to be until Sunday. And if it's Sunday and she's not feeling well, I'm not going to have the practice. I don't know. I don't know how things are going to happen this weekend. <gasps> I got to rest and sleep in. So after that, um, I slept in for a while. I kept pushing the snooze until nine, so. Hey, I got some rest. Probably to take another nap again today. Um, it's funny, the first night that, um, was it Monday? No, Monday I had put the mattress in there. Tuesday morning, I didn't leave until late. My brother was like, how'd you sleep on your new mattress? I was like, fine. Okay. Oh, excuse me. So I thought it was the first person. Then when I came downstairs, mom's like, how'd you sleep on your new mattress? I'm like, fine, okay. And then while I was at work in the first house, Ricky had texted me and said, how's your mattress? Did you sleep okay? And I'm like, yeah, it was fine. Um, yeah, the mattress is fine. It's a little, I will admit, it's a little, um, stiff for me. Um, I do prefer it having some give. I guess I'll just get used to it. I do have the mattress topper on top of it, so that kind of helps because when I lay straight on the mattress, I can't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Um, but overall, I'm sleeping fine. I'm just either waking up constantly in the bathroom or having weird dreams. I'm like, Lord, I don't need this right now. Anyway, so I guess I'll be getting some drawer stuff done today. I guess obviously I'm vlogging. It's not going to be an interesting vlog, but get some stuff done around the house. And then, oh, I have um, an exercise equipment downstairs to put together today, so I'll probably film that. Um, it's a rowing bike or a rowing machine, so I'll put that together for mom. And then there was something else. I guess I can set up her here that we got yesterday. It was funny because we only did the two houses yesterday and we also went out to eat. Um, went to a diner. What I got was pretty good. What did I get? Oh, honey dipped fried chicken and french fries, applesauce. A salad and some bread which was really good well mommy didn't really like what she had well there's too much um she had a salad the salad was fine it was just they had a lot of croutons in it she couldn't eat and then had like two three different like salads like tuna salad chicken salad and egg salad well it's too much mayonnaise and whatever else was in it and it upset her so she just ate some of it and then when she wasn't feeling the greatest, she was like, well, I'm just going to send this home to Zachary, and Zachary liked it, so. 
Oh my gosh. Ugh. It's gonna be one of those days. And the weather is freezing. It's been wintry t this week. It snowed officially. Um, what day was it? Tuesday it snowed. Well, we're at one of our clients' houses, so... Yay. And then it was freezing rain as well. We did get home. The Lord kept us safe Tuesday, and then Wednesday we had to be careful, but we managed. And then, yeah, today is just mom's not feeling the greatest, so please pray for her. I appreciate it. Um, she's just, she's not feeling the greatest, so whatever she has, hopefully gets out of her system. She has medicine that's taking care of that. Um, I heard her get out. She didn't, apparently didn't go back to bed or something, because she ended up unloading the dishwasher. Okay, I go. No, I did because I fell back to sleep, but anyway. Um, today it just seems like it's going to be overcast. It might be, it's windy, so I don't know. What's going on? Today the weather's just gonna be kooky and cold and bleh. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go downstairs. I already took my shower this morning, so, and got dressed. So, I'm gonna go downstairs and take my medicine and eat, so, I'll see you guys later. Excuse me, <laughs> that's not how I wanted to start off this part of the vlog, but anyway. I am back. I ate breakfast. I cleaned up some things downstairs because the kitchen was a wreck. Um, her mom, however, did not. I thought she had unloaded the dishwasher, but she did. I guess she decided just to get a few things out of there. I ended up doing it, which was perfectly fine. Um, I also fixed her breakfast this morning. Well, not too long ago, actually. Um, so I guess she'll be hoarding herself in her room for a while probably all day. I don't know not sure how she's going to take that because my mom is, if anyone knows my mom, she's very active and she's fidgety. I mean, the sickness will definitely make her want to stay in bed probably, but however, um, I don't know how she's going to handle it. <laughs> my mom goes stir crazy. She gets cabin fever really easily and so I'm not sure. Hopefully the Lord will give her a sense of peace. Lord, please give her a sense of peace um, and contentment where she is at. Hopefully, the Lord will just bless her and show her a sense, you know, a sense of joy and peace despite where she's at right now. And she doesn't get traumatized because of her past. But anyway, um, yeah, that's what I've been doing so far. I got some organization to do. We've got new towels, like the long, thick ones. So I need to go through the old ones that are thin and small. Just take those out. I'm not sure where I'm going to put them. I really don't know where to put those because there's just no room for them. But I have to find somewhere to put them. And then put the big ones in there. Just going to take out the whole area. But, yeah, I'm just going to put the newer ones in there and then I'm going to have some of the newer ones that we have had in the past just leave them in there and then put the smaller ones somewhere I also need to clean our bathroom our bathroom is disgusting I mean I just gross it up myself but then sharing with two men ugh it's just gross mm, they're just not very sanitary I'm just like I would love my own bathroom I would just love that have my own bathroom. I can gross. I just feel better if I have my own bathroom because then I would know it's my germs instead of someone else's germs. Sorry, my ear is ringing. Ugh. The benefits of having TMJ. Ear ringing. Lovely. Okay, so. I already did my own devotions, but it is everybody's favorite time of the vlog. Bible time! It's time to read the word with you guys. So, I personally am in. Is it 2 Kings? I, mean? I think I'm in 2 Kings. Yeah, I'm in 2 Kings. But, 
for you guys, we're in Exodus. We're in Exodus chapter 5 now? No, we're in chapter 6. Promises of Deliverance. Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. And Moses said, and God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name, Yahweh, to them. And I affirmed, reaffirmed my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan, for they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel, who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Therefore, say to the people of God, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression, and I will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from the oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. And the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh and the king, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I am such a clumsy speaker. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for, his, for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. The Ancestors of Moses and Aaron these are the ancestors of some of the clans of Israel. The sons of Reuben, Israel's oldest, were Hanok. Here we go with these names again. I pre I'm so sorry if I butcher these names. Or Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Their descendants became the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simon were Jamul, Jaman, Ohad, Jachin, Zahar and Shul. Shul's mother was a Canaanite woman. Their descendants became the clans of Simeon. These were descendants of Levi as listed in their family records. The sons of Levi were Gashon, Kahath, and Merai. Levi lived to be 137 years old. The descendants of Gershon include Libani and Shimini. Shimini? Shimai? each of whom became the ancestor of a clan. The descendants of Kahloth included Amram, Ashar, Hebron, and Azul. Kahloth lived to be 133 years old. The descendants of Merai be included Mali and Mushi. Or is that Mushai? Don't know. <laughs> These are the clans of the Levites as listed in their family records. Amram married his father's sister Jacobeth. Jacobeth. Married his father's sister. That would be his aunt. Ugh. Why were these things permitted? They weren't really permitted, and yet people did this back there. Oof. Anyway. And she gave birth to his sons, Aaron and Moses. Okay. Amram lived to be 137 years old. The sons of Ashgar were Kara, Nepheg, and also they didn't mention Moses and Aaron had a sister who was Miriam, by the way. But the, of course, the women aren't really mentioned as much because the men were more dominant over females. Of course, that was back then. The sons of Ashar were Karah, Nepheg, and Zikri. Aaron married Elishba, the daughter of, oh gosh, Imadab, Imadab, and sister of Nashan, and she gave birth to his sons, Nabab, Abu, Eleazar, and Ethmar. The sons of Karah were Ezer, 
Elk Kanai, Ekana, something like that. And Ebash, Ebasav? Okay. Their descendants became the clan of Kara. Elazar, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Patil, and she gave birth to his son, Phineas. I can actually say that one. <laughs> These are the ancestors of the Levite families listed according to their clans. The Aaron, the Aaron and Moses named his, in their what? The Aaron and Moses named in their list, this list as the same ones to whom the Lord said, "Lead the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, like an army." It was Moses and Aaron who spoke to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. Israel out of Egypt. There we go. And when the when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, excuse me, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I'm telling you. But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do it. I'm such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? <sighs> Moses, Moses, always doubting. Isn't that like us today? Us humans always doubting the Lord. Lord was with Moses, and yet he still doubted. Of course, I can't blame him. I doubt a lot of things that the Lord has blessed me with, or giftings. I fought tooth and nail a lot of times with the Lord. So, I don't blame Moses at all. I can see why he would do such a thing, because I'm a clumsy speaker myself. I don't always know what to say or do, or how to pray. Sometimes it's frustrating. Why is my stomach getting crazy? Thank you, Lord, as always, for living, breathing word. Okay, we have one more chapter in the collective journey. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to, because this Friday tomorrow is supposed to be Bible study. Well, we're not going to probably go to it because my mom is sick. In the fact that we're originally supposed to work. Well, not originally, but we had scheduled work tomorrow. It's probably not going to happen. Anyway. It is what it is. Okay. This is the last chapter, right? Yep. Okay, y'all, we've gotten to the very end. Chapter 17, An Invitation to the Table. When you, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Luke chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. Usually the people we love take... Most take up places. What? Let me reread that. Usually, the people we love most take up places at our tables. Meals are shared, stories told, sins confessed, laughing and crying together. We are dreamers at the family table, thinking about what, thinking about where we have been and where we might one day go. We pray at the table, and at the table, we experience the kindness, grace, and mercy of God. Sharing tables is one of the most human things we can do. Think about it. No other creature consumes its food at the table. Although my golden retriever, Brady, would love an invitation to partake at our table. I will say Skylar was the same way. Our dog, she was small enough she could sit in the chair next to mom and she would just like... <laughs> and then just kind of stare at you until she got food. <laughs> she was one spoiled dog and I'm sure any other people that have dogs or cats would concur that they like to join you at the table and see they get at you whether it's sitting in the chair or just next to the table so but yes Skylar was one of those dogs <laughs> um anyway I am more apt to sit the, t the food on the kitchen counter and let everyone scoop from pot or dish in a hurried and busy life now my mom, she puts a tablecloth on the table and adds the plates, napkins, and silverware. She then dishes the food she prepared into beautiful bowls and sits them around the table. But we, as we sit down to partake, a feeling of peace always comes over me. And I feel blessed to be part of her family. 
It is a blessing that she could take the time to prepare a beautiful meal for me. I'm convinced that one of my mom's delicious meals would bring world peace, especially if she found if she made a lemon meringue pie. Mm, that sounds good. We often most fully al we often most fully alive when we are f sharing a meal around the table. So it, is, it shouldn't surprise us that God has a way of showing up at tables throughout the Bible. At the center of our spiritual lives in the Old and New Testaments, we find the Passover table and the communion table. N.T. Wright makes a valuable point. When Jesus himself wanted to explain to his disciples what his forthcoming death was all about, he didn't give them a theory, he gave them a meal. I love this thought. It reminds me that we may not we may need to discover the art of hospitality again to share the significant burdens and joys of our lives around our tables of food. At our first collective journey closing retreat, I created a beautiful table for our group to sit at and share a meal. I chose beautiful tablecloths, silver charges, plates, linen napkins with gold napkin holders, flowers for centerpieces, individually wrapped gifts, and at the last minute, I added place cards at each seat with the participants' names on them. Ooh, how fancy. Kind of bougie if you ask me. <laughs> but then again, some people are like that. I personally am just like, just have it buffet, buffet style and then bring it to the table. That's just my type style, but to which is own. <laughs> Little did I know the emotional and spiritual significance of this beautiful prepared table. So many beautiful women of God were seated at the table. Each one had a seat with her name on it. Each one belonged. The next day, during her prayer to retreat time, Stacy wrote about the table I had prepared for them. A seat at the table. And this is by Stacy Eubanks. It was Thursday afternoon and I arrived at the retreat house after scrambling to get everything done after a busy mom in ministry would, could leave town. My teenage daughter was a hot mess and I felt like a failure for her so many for so many reasons. But I had committed to this event and I knew I needed to be there. When I walked into the room, my eyes fell on a long table set for dinner. The table thoughtfully and delightfully decorated with silver charges chargers. What exactly is a silver charger? Does that mean silverware? I don't know. Pretty plates, gleaming flatware, sparkling glasses, cheerful yellow pansies placed carefully as serum pieces, and an elegant wrap gift at each place setting. I was carrying so much baggage when I got there that I could all that I could think was, oh my, I'm not dressed for dinner at the table, and I pack so quickly that I don't even have anything nice to put on. But I'm sure everyone won't fit anyway. So I'll grab a seat at the bar nearby when it's time. And then I saw them. There was name cards at every place. I had never had a seat at the table with my name on it. But there it was, already served to me. I didn't feel worthy, but I was there, taking my place at a table prepared for me. That made me think about another table over 2,000 years ago, perhaps the most significant table of all of history. <laughs> Who got a seat at that table? Doubters, deniers, and even betrayers. Jesus included them all at the table of the Passover. He welcomed them despite the what they had done and what he knew they would do. Thomas later doubted him. Peter scoffed at Jesus' prediction at his denial of him and denied Jesus only a few short hours after that last supper. When Peter's eyes met those of Jesus, he was devastated at his failure. How could he be worthy of the bread Jesus had offered? But it was provided, nonetheless. And Judas, really? How did he merit a seat at the table? Of course he didn't, but he had one anyway. Jesus passed the bread of his body in the cup of his blood to a traitor with a heart filled with darkness. Yet he offered love and forgiveness down to this last second. 
And what about me? I'm a doubter, a denier, and a betrayer. So how is it that I'm allowed at the table? I can't buy a seat with my righteousness. Apart from Christ, I have none. I'm allowed at the table for one reason only. Jesus bought my seat. He paid for me. He paid for it in blood and reserved my place. He has saved a seat for you too. There's a card with your name on it and a gift waiting for you. Are you coming? <laughs> it's a table where paupers become princes, losers become leaders, failures are forgiven, and the wretched are redeemed. So don't worry about what to wear or what to bring. Do whatever it takes to go to the table and come hungry. There is nothing more satisfying than the table he has prepared for you. We gather blessed, broken, forgiven, and not yet forgiven. At the beginning of the collective journey, I introduced the spiritual discipline of prayer retreating. To complete this journey, I want to acquaint you with the art of table fellowship. Gathering a place for the blessed, broken, forgiven, and not yet forgiven. Excuse me again. As Stacy wrote about her experience at the table, she recalled how she had the feeling that she didn't belong and didn't bring the right clothes to sit at the table. Every excuse that came her way because she didn't belong. But when she took her seat, the place with her name on the place card, she let go of shame and insecurity and accepted the blessing of being invited to the table. Brokenness shows up at the table. Jesus made the Samaritan made the Samaritan well a table when he spoke to the woman about her broken life and gave her the answer to her most uh, profound shame. Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? John chapter 4 verses 29. This statement came from a true a heart truly set free. While going to retrieve water, a woman met the living water and drank from a well where the water never runs dry. He set the table for the forgiven and yet not yet forgiven. I love the restoration picture that John chapter 21 illustrates. The image of Jesus, the Son of God, fixing breakfast for his disciples gave me goosebumps on my goosebumps. This table prepared on the seat of Galilee is not a simple meal to eat for the stomach's sake. It is a meal of reestablishing a relationship between Peter and, Je and Jesus. It is a place where food leads the way to forgiveness. In this passage, the word used for fire is the same word for fire in John chapter 18, verse 18, where Peter and the others warmed themselves on the night of Jesus' arrest and trial. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> It was a place of Peter's shame. I'm sure when Peter left the boat and made it to the shore, dripping wet to the fire Jesus had made for him, that Peter recognized the smell of his shame, the burning wood. As Peter stood at the fire, he remembered how he, could, he couldn't stand with Jesus that evening, when Jesus needed him most. Jesus served Peter and the other disciples breakfast. It was simple, fish and bread. It wasn't anything he prepared in advance or in invested a lot of time preparing it was what he had no more and no less and the simplicity of their table on a bench or on the beach jesus began discourse about love with simon peter jesus answer to restoring peter to a right relationship is being is seen in giving back you see jesus knew that peter loved him and the answer to the love question wasn't what Jesus was looking for. Instead, he was looking for Peter to understand the message of giving back. In other words, if someone invested in you and your life has changed, then we are called to invest in another. So Jesus compelled Peter to feed, sh feed, shepherd, and feed the sheep again. It's a reciprocal cycle that continues to complete itself. As we conclude the collective journey, let me ask you a question. Will you feed, shepherd, and feed the sheep again? If the answer is yes, then you belong to a tribe of a mighty woman right now. But your tribe is going to grow, so get ready. My friend, continue to dream. 
but more importantly, pass on your dreams to the next generation. Have open palms, practice vulnerability and transparency, and release your dreams. Let me assure you that your dreams are safe with the coming generations because you have poured your life into their lives. And the tribal response is to protect the sacredness of your relationship and dreams. Because of the, because of the relationship, they anticipate the generational blessing of the passing on of dreams. Lastly, keep preparing tables, small, large, medium-sized tables on the sand and beside still waters. Continue to prepare tables full of blessings, brokenness, and forgiveness. As you curl up in your chair with a cozy blanket on the beach soaking up more sun, or some sun, or sitting outside on the patio with your favorite drink, will you reflect one last time with me? Will you prayerfully ask God and yourself these questions and then wait to hear his still small voice speaking through you collecting questions what's your number one what's your expansion plan hmm. question number two how are you adding to your table question number three whom will you bring with you some pretty good questions if i don't say myself <laughs> um and then the back here just kind of has like these different questions type things that were added prior. We were supposed to go through that and I never really did. So but anyway, um, that is the last chapter um, of this book. So I probably won't be reading this anymore. If I find something else, I'll continue to read with you guys. Um, I might get back into the chicken soup thing. Or I might go look through my collection of stuff because I do have a few other books that I can read to you guys that are inspirational. Okay. So what am I to do right now? I don't know. I'm not sure what I'll get into. But I will have to do something. I'll probably end up taking a nap sometime today. So probably won't see me until the evening. So yeah, I'll update you when I have anything to update on. Hey guys, so a little update. I didn't really get much of anything done today. Um, I was planning on it, but <laughs> reality check, I just didn't because one, I probably got sick myself. Um, it's very mild compared to mom's. I just right now it's kind of my throat is kind of sore in the back of my throat. I do have of course thrush because my sinus drainage. But I feel really warm, so I took some Tylenol and I've already had Theraflu earlier today. So yeah, there's that. This weekend, oh my gosh, this weekend is totally not gonna happen. Just kind of sad. Not gonna lie, I was kind of looking forward to. Spending time with family, you know, Friday I was going to go see and visit my mom and Pappy and that's, that was what, that was supposed to happen tomorrow. Not working out. Um, kind of, not going to lie, I'm kind of glad we didn't work. No offense. I would have done today, but tomorrow I wasn't looking forward to the one house because it is just more work than it's ought to be, but anyway, um. That's beside the point. Um, yeah, we're not getting paid, unfortunately. Can't get paid when you don't work. So, we don't have a benefit job. Um, yeah, I was going to clean the bathroom, didn't get around to that because I'm just feeling like crap. Um, I've been checking on mom. She's doing a little bit better. She's improving. She's not coughing as much as she was. So the medicine that she's taking is helping her, which is a good thing. Um, it's been, you know, she did fix her own lunch. She did come out to fix her own thing. Um, so far, it's just me and mom. They're not feeling the greatest. I have no idea how we got it. We could have been last, could have gotten it last Saturday when we went out because we were, you know, all different places. We are at the mall. We were at... Christmas tree store, we were at different 
different stores basically and touching things even though we're pretty sanitary and keeping germs away we're at a restaurant like it is what it is you're gonna get sick no matter what been to the grocery store been around clients this week we've been occasionally not all the time um sunday we're around people you know at church around kids kids are petri dishes they get sick all the time <sighs> So, I don't know how we ended up getting sick, but we did. I, I'm just grateful that my so far is mild. I hopefully don't get as bad as mom because she sounds horrible. She's literally, her voice sounds like she's been drinking whiskey or something. Or has been chain smoking for a while. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing about that, but her voice just is that deep. Just thick with mucus and crap. So, hoping and praying that she recover soon and myself so we can get through this continue to pray for us i much appreciate it um yeah being sick sucks <laughs> it really does part of my french but it really does it sucks um so far the boys are not gotten anything hopefully they won't i've been trying to keep my distance my mom has two we're more sanitary than they are it's one of the reasons why i don't want them to get sick because they're both babies and they don't keep their self hygienic as well as they should. So anyway. Mm, let's see, what's I'm keeping out for the, out for the cats. And I haven't seen Oreo today, I guess the owner that owns him girl has brought him in, hopefully. He hasn't been around today, which is unusual, but I'm hoping he is inside so he leaves Mo, Mo alone. She has come around. I did fed her not too long ago, and I've only seen Tiger. Oh, and I did see Prissy, but she is, you know, his hit and miss, basically. But anyway, so I've been fed the cats whenever I saw them. I don't, don't want to put a lot of food out there unless they're actually there. So, yeah, that's kind of how my day was, just not feeling the greatest and resting and trying to feel better and taking care of mom at the same time. So, this weekend didn't turn out the way we wanted to, but it is what it is. Hopefully, I am, because Monday is supposed to be a work day, and we're supposed to work three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, that will feel better by Sunday. Hopefully the Lord will be gracious to us and clear us up so we feel enough and have enough energy to go and work because, you know, next week is Thanksgiving week, so we need to get that done. And then rest up because then we have the next five days after that. We have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. Oh. Hallelujah. And I'm not going anywhere, so... Yay. <laughs> um, I don't think there's really anything else to update you guys on, to be quite honest. Just been kind of resting. Oh, and this is not nothing, really. I am surprised I have been watching these on Prime. I guess I'm just bored <laughs> or just finding something that's more... Usually I don't watch Christmas movies until the month of December, but I don't, with Prime, you don't know when these videos will leave. Some of them are already leaving by November 30th, and so I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch the ones I want to watch. I watch these silly, very predictable Christmas movies that are basically like Hallmark movies. I think most of them are or close to it, um, and they're very predictable. But I love them, and they're very mild, most of them. Um, I've been trying to modify what I've watched because there's a lot of stuff that I've been, like, not gonna lie, um, all four of the, um, so say Divergent, no, not the Divergent ones, um, The Hunger Games are on Amazon Prime right now. 
and yes I've seen them prior but I've been wanting to watch them again but God has been convicting me and saying no I shouldn't be watching this it's too much violence and I've been really reevaluating what I've been watching and hearing and yeah, seeing hearing and thinking um, so yeah I've been really watching what I've been what um, what I intake and because it really corrupts it can corrupt you you know there's a lot of language there's a lot of perverted evil garbage and I'm like I want to prevent myself I'm not saying I'm not perfect and will walk and won't watch something that has something or other in it don't get me wrong but at the same time I am trying to prevent myself from falling into a trap which is the devil's trap and I'm not going to fall for that so I've been really reevaluating what is good to watch and what is not good to watch even though it sounds cool at the moment it's damaging in the long run so that's just my personal conviction stuff it doesn't have to that's not every um one's I was gonna say cup of tea or conviction or whatever it per it's just my personal conviction I've been really reevaluating what I've been watching as a Christian in my growth with Christ I just don't feel led to be watching a lot of things I have been watching or seeing and I've been honestly on social media I've been or on YouTube or whatever YouTube Instagram TikTok I haven't really done any on my TikTok but I have unfollowed a lot of people on Instagram and on YouTube that have been bad influences and just corrupted nonsense and it's just I don't agree with it so I've had to let people go even though I like their content for the most part there's some things I just there's no gray areas when it comes to the Lord and my walk with the Lord it shouldn't be gray areas either there needs to be black and white it's simple black and white through and through I want to walk on the righteous path and not be distracted by all this unnecessary worldly things so that's what I've been also doing is decluttering my life from toxicity and stuff it might not be toxic to a lot of people but it is for me so that's what I've been trying to do and anyway going back to the Christmas story thing I don't usually watch Christmas stuff until then but it's been it's been a mild um stuff that I can watch that isn't so perverted so yeah <laughs> just been kind of watching that even though it's not even Thanksgiving yet but oh well <sighs> oh my gosh I, my head feels like it's on fire I'm gonna have to go get um not only a scrunchie to put my hair up, but I think also a wet rag, cool rag would feel better as well because I am not feeling the greatest. Could get an ice pack. That would probably last longer, but I'll do something to cool myself off. I even went outside briefly because it's so cold outside. It's so cold. I don't get it. Why? I don't like winter, but it comes in handy at times when you're extremely warm but at least I am grateful that we do have a warm house um, we have enough money to pay and facilities to pay for our heating thing but anyway uh, anyway um yeah that's kind of how my day was it's boring but you know Oh well, it is what it is, and I'm praying that the Lord helps us and heals us in the name of Jesus. Lord, just help us. And helps Ricky and Zachary not to get sick, because they do not need to get sick. It's bad enough that Mom and I get sick, but we are actually the ones that will brave out the thing. We won't feel like we I mean, we feel like crap, but we can handle it more than the guys can. The guys are such babies, I tell you what. <sighs> It's a good thing Ricky doesn't get sick as much as he does because he cannot. No, I mean, he just he just doesn't know how to handle sickness. Like most men don't know how to handle sickness very well. I'm not saying not every man can't, but I'm just saying a lot of the ones that I know 
can't handle it. They just can't. <laughs> oh well, they can handle a lot of things, but that just, they can't handle that. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not criticizing men or anything like that. It's just that sometimes they can be babies about things. <laughs> I think that's why God made women give birth to children instead of men. Because God knew that women can handle giving birth versus men. I think that's one of the reasons why us women give birth and not men. <laughs> just the food for thought, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog, even though it might be boring, it might be annoying, I don't know. It might be not very entertaining, but whatever. It is what it is. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. Keep on smiling. Stay positive. I'm going to stay positive despite all of this. And hope you guys do too, and I'll see you guys next time. Most likely I'll be filming tomorrow because <laughs> I probably won't be going anywhere. So as long as I'm feeling well, I'll vlog. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.